Hello, hi everyone. Today we'll be talking about searching problem, uh, particularly uniform search. So let's go back to whatever we discussed in last week, uh, the data about what is the state. So whatever the informa uh, information you will have about the environment, what is the environment? You can think it is the real world. Whatever the uh, where the problem setting will be uh, uh, specified, this you consider as the environment. All the information about you know the world given is state information for you those information required to make appropriate decision is known as the state for example i'm i'm giving you lecture right so my state is whatever i have learned till today so someone will ask me i'll reply that right so in order to reply i need to have some background and whatever study i have done so this is known as a kind of state where in what state i am and the action would be to reply to the question whoever will ask right so, uh, uh, I remember Professor Mawson said in one of his talk that any problem can be treated, you know, as a search problem. So, when you go for an AI model, the simplest thing you think about that, what is the input and output, right? That will make things very clear to you when, when someone is explaining something to you and you, you don't get it, just ask what is the input to the system and what is the output. Fine. What model is doing? Model is transforming input to output. That's what it is doing, right? So this is very important analogy to take up, uh, you know, when while while discussing some AI problem. So you think about the input, output, and how input is being transformed to output is our AI system, right? So search stat strategy. <laughs> In one of his talk, he also said you give him any problem and he'll convert into kind of you know search problem that's true i also believe uh, to this because what is happening whether it's a classification generation task you are giving state information to a model finally model is mapping it to some hidden space and that hidden space maps it to some outcome space so ultimately it's searching appropriate space for a given state that's what all happens right a search strategy is defined by picking up the order of node expansion. Now we'll mainly talk about how to do searching. So searching is visiting different nodes of a graph, tree, or a structure. So we'll be talking about that. So in what terms we'll compare to algorithm is the completeness, time complexity, space complexity, optimality, and system uh, systematicity. So these are the five components on which we'll just completeness means does it always find a solution if one exists? This is known as a completeness. So there might be some algorithm where you will run, but still it will not go to the solution. So th this problem may occur there. Time complexity, how much time it is taking to, uh, uh, to run the algorithm. Space complexity, how much computer space it is occupying. Optimality, does it always find a least cost solution? Yeah, so this is something tricky. What is optimality means? Optimality, what fine? It is finding every time some solution given a scenario. But does it the optimal path? Is it the optimal path? If it is, is some cost is associated with each transition from one node to another, does it taking the optimal path? This is the meaning of this, you know, parameter systematicity. Does it visit each state at most once? So is it, uh, it also visiting, you know, one node more than one times or not? So if it is visiting uh, each node at uh, at most once, it is known as a systemicity, right? Now three symbols that we'll be using throughout the lecture is B, uh, R, B, D, and M. So what is B, D, and M? Let's understand about that. So B is a maximum branching factor of search tree. So branching, you know, given a node, how much branch it has. So this is the, uh, you know, uh, give you the sense of the branching. D is the depth of least cost. How much, uh, you know, depth it can we have of the tree is the D for that. Maximum depth of a uh, state space may be known as M. So the M is a kind of symbol they have given maximum de depth of uh, state space. How much space it can have. Now coming to few search problems. So what are the search problems? You, mi you might have you know, seen this picture, which is uh, eight puzzle problems. So there is a blind box. And finally, uh, you have to sift that blind box and go from one state to another state. 
for example this is a start state and this is a cold state how will you go there so you have you can see here there there can be four possibility one would be go up down left and right so uh, taking one operation at a time going to another state and then from one to another and like that until you reach the goal state so this is a kind of searching problem because you are modifying the state each time right and finally checking whether it has reached goal or not if not then you are going further search you know and then there are four terms states action goal and path goal state you can see whatever the uh, where you want to go start state is the initial state where you are is and from initial state to goal state how whatever the state transition you will do are the different states but this is not the only state it can also have the other state as well so whatever the possible combination of start state you could do given the constant is uh, are the states right what are the path cost path cost means doing an operation how much does it cost for example this this is a blank box right so the cost might be for uh, going up would be two uh, two uh, unit let's say and for down it's a one unit for left and right it's one unit so always better to go you know down rather than up if both are leading to same kind of scenario from where the reaching to goal would be you know similar of you know complexity it's it's quite similar to analogy fix the same it's taking up stairs going up is more you know difficult compared to going down so this is one example if you see this is the source and this is the target one blank if this blank is known as a blank 2434567 and 12534 blank 678 so saying this is the source and i need to go to target how will you go that you have a three option if you see for this blank you cannot go up right because there is no such way you can go down you can go left and right so if uh from the here to if i have to go to target what should i do should i go down or should i go left or right what to do with the you know uh, optimal thing that can be done so for example if you see this scenario what could be done it, it going right seems more appropriate so if you go to the right it will be one two blank right and then whatever the situation you have now from that state 1 to blank if you just go the blank to down it will be 1 to 5 blank and everything is matching as target finally so in two state you are you know going to the target so this is how operation works that's why i wanted to show now coming to the example this is the uh, uh, formal definition of states location of the tiles whatever the location of the tiles you know have you have in this given scenario state states actions are move blank left right up and down so this, there is a blank path right that you can either up down left and right goal test equals to goal state whatever the goal state will be given to you know reach path cost one per move for example it is defined here but in various problem given the action you know cost also differs so that's why i said going up would be 2 compared to going down which will be 1 note uh, optimal solution of n positive family is the hand yeah this is the very important point you need to see is the optimal solution for n positive problem is a np hard problem so this is one you know example uh, the professor has shown in his lecture was this was the current state 1 2 3 8 blank 4 7 6 and 5 so from here uh, what you can do blank ha has the four options it can go left right up and down so if first this has gone up this one has gone right this one has gone down and this one has gone right right so this is the four possibility from a here you have how many possibility you have again two possibility right shift the uh, blank to to left and right that what that's what it has been done for for this one also it has the two options to either go, uh, for this is the blank so what you could do you can do blank to up and down so this is there are the two possible similarly for other also it has been expanded 
uh, finally the expansion goes on so you have to go do the expansion until you reach to the goal state and from there onwards you can do any searching algorithm which could be uh, either let's say you are doing bfs then you should uh, do the breath first this 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 and in depth process what you do you go deep so you take this one then this one then this one and then go deep about that right another uh, important search problem is the n queen problem so you might have played you know chase game so it's same as that so a blank chase i'll give you i'll give you eight queens i'll say arrange them in such a way so that no queens no two queens attack each other this is the problem statement that you uh, know has to be solved in n queen problem so what are the states it states that the any arrangement of 0 to 8 queens on the board is a is a state right it is the initial state no queens on the board everything is blank this is the initial state actions what you have so there are how many actions add a queen to any empty square so you have some options right what are the action add a queen to any empty square so i have eight queens when i'm starting i can put queen to the any place because everything is black when i'll put another queen i'll make sure that it should not contradict with the first queen when i'll put the third queen i'll put it in such a way that it should not you know again contradict to other two queens goal state uh, you know goal state is eight queens are on the board and none attacked so this is the final scenario what we are expecting now coming to uninformed search so what is uninformed search uniform search is like you don't have any information you have the equal information about the nodes and they are equally likely this is the you know, data you have given and you have to do the search strategy but in ri life we don't do un you know ununiform search we have some data about the problem we are doing and then we try to use those heuristics but here no such heuristics are given uniform search strategy is only the information available in the problem definition itself no additional information will be given so there are you know four most popular uninformed search strategies breadth versus known as bfs depth versus known as dfs and depth limited search iterative deepening search are two another you know search strategy uh, uniform and search strategy now we'll talk about the bfs So this is let's say scenario given to you. A is the root node. B and C are the child. For B, there are again two childs, D and E. For C, there are three childs, F, G and H. So we need to use some data structure to you know visiting the, the nodes. Can anyone say why Q is the most appropriate here? or q is not appropriate should we use some other data structures such as stack or or something else linked in so in bfs what we say is you are visiting one node you see all the association of that node first this is the bfs so here you are at a you see all the association b and c then you are at b then you see all the association d and e this this is the breadth for search but if you are using here depth for search you are seeing a it's saying okay go for b another node go in depth again d not e for d you see if there is any you know child then you go there is it complete algorithm yes it is Th what is the time complexity time complexity b key part d right so uh, that those things we discussed there no? so what is b what is d b is the depth uh, sorry b is the branching factor and d is you know the optimal depth right so this points uh, you need to keep it maximum branching factor of search d is the b d is the depth of least cost solution so there would be solution right so what will be the depth of that solution is the d representing m is the maximum depth so this is the difference between m and d 
so its time complexity is order of you know b key power d and the space complexity is also similar why it is so so for example if you see b is the branching factor and d is the depth so what we do in the breadth first search is like we expand breadth first so if you let's assume your solution as a dth depth it has to go till the b so, you know uh, all the b solution it has b children it has to see so that's why it is o key power b of t now depth for search by name it suggests it its its property is to go depth first right so rather than going here and then if you has expanded one node what is the children of that node you have to see and go in like that so maintain stack of nodes to visit there so this is this is the reason why i ask you what is the most appropriate you know data structure about that so we'll discuss why is stack in queue but before that let's understand the dfs uh, in details so dfs says you need to go in d first so for example if you are at the a if you have expanded c it is saying you don't see other nodes you should not see this blank one you go depth for that so for c it is again saying don't see any blank you go in depth so g and then the depth of g and like that so this is what the depth first search how it works right so if you see a depth first search we are going deep so if you are putting all the nodes you just have to do what so uh, for example a then c then g that's where we are doing but if it is a breadth first search we, we are doing a b c d e and like that so this is the difference between breadth first search and depth first search so for depth first search most appropriate data structure is a stack right while for the q it is uh, for the bfs it is q because here you are doing uh, this this kind of traversal traversal is the only is the reason why we are taking q here but in dfs we are taking stack so you i don't know whether you all be remembering those property or not so there are properties of this data structure lifo and fifo last in first order and first in first uh, last in first order and first in first order first in first order means those who come first will you know popped out first but for lifo last in first out whoever will come last at you know in the list will be popped first and that is the reason why they are you know applicable different for this different algorithms now next question is is it complete depth first is, is complete complete means is it finding every time solution no it doesn't so that uh, what is the time complexity time complexity is, is b key power m b is you know branching factor and m is the maximum depth space complexity is bm now come to the another you know kind of solution which is cheapest first so it says if i'll also give a's weight in e uh, uh, you know two nodes are connected by a's fine will if you'll also associate some weights to each aces and you, uh, the strategy is that you do cheapest first right so for example a this given scenario what you will choose whether for a you will choose b or c you need to do cheapest first so you need to go for one so this is the how it works so you reach to you know b from b which one you will choose whether d or e you will choose d because you are doing the cheapest first and like that but it is not same as you know depth first search but for this example it seems like similar to that but if if one uh, one and the other one would be let's say 0.5 here uh, for example yeah it's it's a special kind of deep first search if it is depth first search what we have done a b d and like that so here if this number if i have switched the for a's weight for a and b is 1 if i switch the a's weight between bd and be let's say the weight of bd is 6 and weight of be is 2 then the expansion would something look like a b c a uh, sorry a b e it would not be a b e because for b cost would be 2 and for bd cost would be 6 that's why we are not expanding bd first 
and while in deep first search when depth first search we always expand vd first compared to be so this is the difference between the depth first search and cps first don't intermix these two algorithms now what is the rank complexity it's a cc is the cost optimal cost c by ee e is the is right space complexity is uh, oh, it's a uh, b ki par c star star you know indicates the optimality is it optimal yes it is because that was the definition of optimality right so if it is finding solution that's cool but it will find the take the solution of those path which will cost least or in some sense cost also define as maximizing something might be reward so it should take the path which is giving the maximum reward so don't intermix these two words so people might be, be, i have seen confuse a lot time so sometime op objective either to maximize or minimize maximize would be what we need to maximize the let's say reward and we need to minimize the penalty so for example here what we have to do we have to chip as first we have to minimize the cost but in some sense if i have call it as a reward then this it would be like you know maximize reward right so this is the difference between objective is you know just a reverse of each other maximize and minimize but given the problem it has to you have to expand accordingly now we'll go and further discuss about you know other algorithms and uh, understand how things are going there so just a second so for algorithm what matters time and space mm -hmm. another name for space is no now i'll think about we have discussed many algorithms BFS we discuss, DFS we discuss, CPS first we discuss. Now in terms of in terms of time and memory, which one is the better, or something like that. Let's discuss about that. Time, depth, you know, this is the depth, and how many nodes are there? If it is two depth three, then there are how many nodes? There are one one zero nodes. and if it has to do uh, which algorithm it is it is bfs so for bfs we are analyzing what time and memory if depth of the tree is 2 number of nodes would be around 110 and the time it will take very less which is 0.11 millisecond memory to occupy 107 kilobyte but if you just do the double the depth four nodes you know expand drastically why so because the branching factor is so high here it's a 10 so that's why it is uh, let's let's make you sure why for depth two why number of nodes are 110 can anyone you know calculate it how it is happening or i'll i'll then discuss about that why it is 110 branching factor is So if you can see the relation between depth and nodes, 
as you increase the depth keeping your branching factor constant the number increases drastically for depth 2 number of nodes 110 for 4 it's 11110 and it is going every time 10 key per 2 if you just multiply because branching factor is 10 and for uh, one uh, you know if you are extending for the two depth it will be what it will be 10 into 10 and that's why 100 right so every time that's why it is multiplying being multiplied by 10 key power 2 so this is this is why the reason it was so this was not exact number they are just giving enough power of that 10 key power 12 and like that so if you can see if uh, branching factor is 10 and depth is 16 will take 350 years times to do BFS <laughs> 350 years can you imagine and will take memory up to 10 exabyte right which is huge 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 right so this is one you know uh, trade-off has been given to you what you want to maximize with the time or the memory maximize in the sense optimize that's why I'm saying so this is taking two minutes and one zero three gigabyte so uh, you, you are in nowadays if you see we are not caring much about memory because we have lot of space no we don't have that much space problem we have the time problem if uh, you know some solution if algorithm is doing doing the task in half time and it is taking four times memory I'll be always happy with that because the time is ma matter most why time matter most because it is something which you cannot get it but the space you can reuse it the space you can merge it and something like that for this you, you need to think about that why it was like that right now coming to the next slide which is about the beam search so what is the idea about the beam search I, if those who are doing some research particularly in NLG natural language generation they might have heard this term beam search a lot of times so beam search says okay no issue they are giving a kind of one restriction here the restriction is that maintain a constant size frontier whenever the frontier becomes large prune the worst node so it is saying you you decide some constant size frontier frontier means how much you are going to open with that the given expansion right so you fix that and whenever you, you know it is becoming crossing the limit you need to prune the worst node prune the worst node means if you are uh, in terms of cost if I have to say you are expanding that you have to prune it is it optimal no it is not because here you are you have don't have the completeness also it is not com complete as well optimal says is always find the optimal cost path now another uh, mm, mm, searching strategy is iterative deepening search what it says it says for, for depth first is what you used to do for depth search we go a for b for d we are going in depth right and here the uh, how much depth you can go it is the maximum depth that is allowed but here you are saying eh, let's decide some maximum depth for let's say 2 I mean 2 you haven't reached there you make it double it let's say 4 and then 4 if you have not this 8 so that way you will not expand uh, too much of depth of the tree if it somewhere lies in the you know above there but in the another side so that you uh, uh, that you know uh, time is being saved for this algorithm so uh, did you get the idea about the iterative deepening if you think in a bit depth you'll, you'll get it let's say I'm explaining with this example so this is the scenario for example but you consider the depth of the tree is too high so what will happen a b d and whatever it comes it will go like that in depth right but solution would have been C then uh, something a C or F or Z then it has to come back let's say the depth is thousand then it has to explore all those nodes till the thousand you know depth and then it has to come back again to A and then go to C and then F is the solution 
so this time is becoming so uh, huge so what it is saying iterative deepening it says you start with some some threshold depth would be two if you till two you haven't reached for example a b d then you backtrack and come to a and then go uh, then you increase your depth uh, double it your depth so from two we are doing it four so then it goes in that direction and go like that so this is one example it has been given iterative deepening search if it is zero this is the root node if it is deepening one you are expanding one node at a time now uh, in depth iterative deepening search e equals to two here so you are going to the second level three you are going to the third level so this is the efficacy of iterative deepening is it complete algorithm means if, if there used to be solution will it find the solution every time yes it is because if you see it is quite analogous to the dfs and with some addition constant so if there used to be solution then why here it will not be solution so here will also have some solution about that right so for dfs it is not complete sorry i mistaken it there so uh, for it will not uh, if there will be solution we cannot guarantee that every time you will get the solution so uh, but iterative deepening is complete it every time if it, it used to have a solution it will guarantee to converge there it will guarantee to reach there so try to understand what is the difference between these two it it's quite similar with that D, uh, dfs but that you know limitation has been alleviated here so how does it happen just think for a second and then i'll say why it is happening so So see here that limit was one here two and three. So in one we have expanded these two. Right? Iterative search is equals to two. So what happens here? If you see the difference, we are going at the second level as well. So we started with the root. We expanded this blue one, right? Blue one in the all possible of z. For three we are going to the three level. So if you could observe uh, the scenario here what is the difference between d general dfs and here if it would be have been general dfs will go depth and depth for that but it is saying no 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 you don't go that depth given the limit you come back and then go uh, in in the given depth right so that's why it is how it's different from the dfs and uh, in dfs uh, uh, that's uh, there, but it is guaranteed to converge to some solution. What is the time complexity? Time complexity is uh, again exponential, which is b k part d, right? A space space is also same, uh, not same. It's a factor of these two fa uh, attributes only, but not in exponential term, but multiplication order of b d. Is it optimal? Yes, it is optimal if step cost is one. Step cost. What does that mean? Node of each cost is one. Not node. Node to node. To, you know, is can can be modified to explore uniform such iterative lengthening. Now coming to these few problems. So let's say this was the graph. What is the BFS order? BFS order. We are starting from A. Then BFS order. We go. You know, for in the breadth first search. So you'll go for a the all the childs of a you'll explore so a i explored and then it's child which is b and g so i put b and g 
when the gold state was G, that's why we stopped here. If we have done here rather than BFS, we have, we have to do, you know, DFS. What would be the solution? We have gone A to B and then A, B to C, then C to D and then D to G. And this is how the DFS works. So A, B, C, D, G. The, uh, we reach to the gold state, but we have go in depth rather than in breadth. Uh, another one is ID DFS, iterative deepening depth for search. So it's a kind of DFS. That's why we are calling it as a iterative deep, uh, deepening. So for iterative deepening, we initially have in one size we are going for A. For if you have make depth to be two, then it would be A, B, and G, right? Because you increase the depth. There used to be one problem if you have to observe, if you to, it would be, you know, there would be some cycle, then there is a problem. For example, this and this, what is the difference? There used to be age, age you can observe now. So this is the, there used to be directed age, but here there is no direction for A to B and B can also go to A. Right. So the what problem it will lead to for DFS if you do. So for A to B it will go fine. For B it can go to C and A as well. Right. Because the both way possibility. So again it will take A because if you have restricted lexico lexicographical order, then if from A to B it will go it has two options C and A but lexicographic order if you have it will go to A for A it will uh, have option to go to B and C for lexicography it will go to B and this loop will be there so this is one problem also occurs if it is rather you know a not directed graph then this kind of things happen what is the solution solution you can has you know mentioned here partial reduction the repeated expansion can be done so that those repetition we need to track somewhere that for example this was a scenario for a to b and from b to a why should we go to a that that you should how do you know if you have tracked it if you have saved it that you have already you know explore that node then you will not go there so this is this is where you can you know restrict that part that wherever it, you have already reached please don't go there now there used to be something if you see forward search and backward search so this is let's say start state you are from here, here you are going to all where if i say gold uh, let me give you an analogy for you know forward search and backward search then i can explain you Let's say uh, here from from this IIT Patna, I have to go somewhere. For example, let's say some uh, city. Uh, um, let's assume it's a Rajgir. I have to go. I have two options. I can take car or I can take bike. But there is also a constraint that I want to explore the way. Right. There could be two possibility while going from here to Rasgir I can go on bike and coming uh, I can come with you know car this is one option another option would be go on car and come on bike both way you can explore right this is my source and this is the goal so if I am going from here and then doing exploration to the goal it is what is happening it is happening to like a forward search but backward search means I have reached the goal and from there I am deciding how I will reach from Rajgir to mm, IIT Patna campus. So there also I explore the path but it is like a backward search and this is the difference between forward search and backward search. Another, uh, if you mix these two it known as a bi-direction. If I say I don't have much time so what I will do, I will uh, start and my friend al also start. I will do forward search from IIT Patna and he let's do, you know backward search from Rajgir then in 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 way we'll meet each other and our time will be saved half time will be only you know required to do exploration and he can share the information i can share the information finally we can merge this information as a unified information 
so this is how the backward and forward search differs to each other so idea is that why not to do the two things together as i said in the example if i I'll, i'll do exploration my friend will also do exploration at the end when we will meet the time will be place and finally we'll have idea about the whole path so here also the same thing comes why not we can mix forward search and backward search together and that's known as a, a both way search or something when when is the bi- uh, bi direction search applicable so this is the bi direction search you are searching in the both way you are doing forward search you are doing backward search it is known as a bi direction search is it complete given the scenario given a problem if i is it always find solution if it exists answer is yes it will what is the time complexity if you see it become d by 2 initially it was d but it become d by 2 because both way exploration is happening right in the parallel so it's it's time complexity is reduced and so the space as well so it's becoming d by 2 rather than uh, rather than uh, you have to do d is what d is your uh, d is what uh, is the depth where you can find the optimal solution so it's d by 2 half it becomes initially for it used to be o ki par order of b ki par d but here it become d by 2 because we are doing both way search that's why is it optimal if i'll give you the problem whether it will find a path which cost will be always minimum yes uniform cost search can use in the both direction if you'll use the searching technique uniform search in the both direction doing the forward and backward then finally yes it can it can do the op- give you the optimal solution now let's summarize the algorithms that we have discussed till now so what criterions we will had we had completeness time space and optimality right and these are the algorithm bfs uniform cost depth for search depth limited iterative deepening bidirectional right so in terms of completeness if you see depth for, uh, dfs is not right but others rather other than the depth limited we have the solution yes do we can guarantee if there used to be some solution given this problem it will converge there in terms of time if you see uh, exponential o of b ki par d and all going there so for bi direction it's quite less compared to bfs which is o ki par b uh, b ki par d here is b ki par d by 2 which is becoming half right so if i ask which one is taking more time whether it's dfs or bfs what would be your answer just think for a second and see what would be the answer just see for the time complexity for bfs it is taking order of b ki par d and for dfs it is order of b ki par m now you say which one is most costlier in term of terms of time which algorithm should i use if i have to prioritize time Yes. So, which one is more costly? Okay. So, let me explain. So, if you have to compare these two factor, order of b ki par d and order of b ki par m, base for both is same b. The only difference in exponent part, which is b. Ah, uh, sorry, which is d and m. Now, which one will be higher? those uh, algorithm would we take you know more time so what is d d is the depth m is the depth m is the maximum depth and b d is the 
depth where you can optimally find the solution so which one would be lesser d would be lesser than m right so o k pair uh, sorry b k pair m would be more than compared to b k pair d so which one is taking more time d f s is taking more time compared to b f s so this is how you have to do which one is optimal optimal is uniform cost and all other have some constraints so this power if you see those now you know sub uh, super skips they are some conditions which has been explained in the caption given to the figure so that you have to see now coming to the prop so whatever till we discuss this algorithms they are all like a blind algorithm you don't have additional information you are exploding in the fine solution or oh, these are the kind you know now coming to the solution can we add some guidance guidance means extra information they are act, they are acting as you know heuristics can we put it like that can we do uniform search so this is always better to do uniform search if we'll have some additional information about the problem but for few scenario obviously you need to do uniform search because uninformed says you, you don't know the about the problem there you have to do but if you have some idea about the problem that you can use is, as the heuristic while expanding the nodes you can say no no, no these brands never will go to the solution because it has so and so if additional information or the domain knowledge you feel have right so those expansion time space would be safe so that's why we will uh, going doing you know informed says is more better than an inform search and next lecture we'll talk about that but before that we'll do some assignment solution for this problem and we'll discuss about that right so uh, there are a few mcq that we'll discuss and then there are a few numericals that we'll try to solve and then we'll discuss you know the next part which is informed search where you will have information about component and you have to say do the searching so a extra thing would be with the extra information you will get some idea whether you should you know explode some branch or not no not right like that you will have you will be given a guidance for those things so that those things would be there so now we'll discuss a uh, uh, few problems regarding this topic and then we will discuss let's let's discuss so first problem is what were the reasons leading the first ai winter in 1974 to 80 so there was a you know segment 1974 to 80 where first ai winter has been termed why it is show what was the reason just think for a second and the options are failure of machine translation so machine translation you must be knowing translating from one language to another trans uh, language so from hindi to english english to bengali bengali to tamil like that mm. decline of lisp lisp is the programming language so decline of the lisp was the reason for calling ai winter poor speech understanding so model were not able to um, do the understanding of the speech properly was the reason negative results of neural network neural network uh, were giving not in favor results so what were the reasons why first uh, ai winter you know has been called for 1974 to 80 period the reason was this the failure of machine translation decline of lisp no poor speech understanding yes there was negative results of neural network so this this three options would be correct for calling you know ai winter in 1974 to 80 now coming to the next question which of the following is or are reasons for recent take off the deep learning why this days deep learning has been you know it has it's so popular although it has been proposed very early 
why it has become popular in last five years what is the reason the options are it can be used to model real world problems increase computation power with the advent of gpus numerical optimization and algorithm efficiency and access to lot more label data so what were the reasons deep learning become you know such famous these days yeah so a reason what it can be used to model real world problems it's not like that because it used to be more real world mod problem could be modeled 20 30 years back as well increase computation power with the advent of gpu that's true nowadays you have the computation power that that will be the reason numerical optimization algorithm efficiency it has been increased over years that's true access to lot more lab label data will uh, now we have so much data and that to label with some information is it so yes these are the three reasons why deep learning has become so popular in last five years now coming to the next question which action is the rational agent expected to prioritize so if i if a rational agent used to be there what action it will try to prioritize options are the morally correct options which are morally correct actions which will leads to the greatest reward action which will leads to less loss socially acceptable solution so uh, which one would be correct it's pretty easy so you people can guess obviously it doesn't know moral or rational agent say yeah agent don't know so it will not obviously do action that will gi give the greatest power reward yeah that's true because that's how it the objective has been you know framed so it will do the action it will take the actions which will give it highest reward or the greatest reward so that's why option b would be correct action which leads to less loss that's also some sense too because action which will give you the less loss it will try to do but if it has been optimized or you know framed in terms of reward then it would be do the greatest so socially acceptable so it has nothing to do with the society and all right so the even the definition is like that for each possible percept equation does whatever action is expected to maximize the performance measure on the basic of evidence perceived so far and built in knowledge so this is the definition given the information given the learned behavior what it will do so that the maximize the performance measure right if the performance measure is reward then it will do the action which will lead to the greatest reward if i have changed the definition and said for each possible percept sequence does whatever the action is expected to minimize let's say loss then the here which option would be correct the third one would be correct now coming to the next question what is an expert system in context of ai so for a context of artificial intelligence which of the fourth you know definition become more uh, is appropriate for expert system the options are a group of human experts which have high skill with respect to particular field or task an ai system which consists of encoding knowledge of the entire domain using the logical form using that knowledge being used an ai system which ask human experts only if it is unsure about the prediction on the task or none of the above so out of this four which one yeah, you know suits most for expert system that you have to answer Yeah, think for a second and then we'll discuss terms. that which one is here more that prepares the second definition an ai system which consists of encoding knowledge 
of the entire domain using a logical form and using that knowledge base to reason so here AI definition is to encode the information what you have and use that information to reason reason means given the scenario if someone asks what to do whatever the information you had you first encoded in logical form and the process that uh, you know the database or if I say knowledge base given the inference constraint and see whether these two contradict each other or satisfy each other if it satisfy you can answer accordingly the system will say yes it could be possible if not so then it can say no it's not possible in real world because the information it has encoded are contradictory to you know the inference or the query someone has triggered now going next strong AI hypothesis says machine should only act intelligently machine should only think intelligently machine that think intelligently must act intelligently too and machine that intelligently uh, that act intelligently must think intelligently this is very good question so think which one would be correct what is the strong AI hypothesis which of the four you know is the correct one so thinking and doing the, it has been designed like that Yeah, so which one would be correct here? Whether machine should only act intelligently or think intelligently or both, but if it think intelligently must act intelligently, which one should be correct? Machine that act intelligently must think intelligently, intelligently too. Yeah, that's uh, here if you see why the so first two options were only but here the other two are like both it can do but the reason has been different so the which is most separate is machine that act intelligently must think intelligently too if it is doing good it it's most likely that it is you know thinking also intelligently that's why it is doing that behavior right so this was the reason which is, is the most appropriate now coming to the next question suppose that there are the two nodes u and v in a graph there is a graph and there are two nodes u and b we find two paths connecting two nodes using bfs and dfs so we pass we do the bfs and dfs the first path is p1 the second path is p2 the p1 is done by bfs and the p2 is done by dfs uh, now it's saying what can be said about the length of two paths this p1 and p2 so path written by bfs will always be shorter than bfs so this is just a comparison between P and P2, P1 and P2. P1 will be greater than P2, P1 greater than equals to P2, P2 greater than equals to P1, P2 greater than P2, uh, P1. So these are the four possible and asking which one should do. Both algorithms will always return the same path. This is also an option, I missed it. So you need to say which one would do in terms of length of path, whether BFS or DFS given the scenario.
So just think about that. Let's say uh, imagine a graph. You have root node r, and there are u and v somewhere. Right. So it is saying there is a path. Which one will take less path? In DFS, what you go do? You do depth, right? In BFS, you do breadth. Now think about it. Yes, so you think if you have could come up with that, that the reason would be path written by BFS, that one would always be longer, you know, path written by would never be longer than the written by DFS. Why it is so? Because in BFS, if you see, you are doing breadth wise. In DF DFS, you are going depth wise. So if you are doing DFS, you are going in depth, right? A, B, D, E, something like that. But u and v are, are, are the two edges of the graph in bfs I, we don't know where u and v are because we don't know the position so what will happen if let's assume some scenario u and v would be at in the let's say in the same in the same branch for example so what will happen if they are in the same branch for u to be uh, yeah for you to be path would be one only find the two parts connecting the two nodes using the BFS and DFS so for BFS what it would be it will go from in one go it will find out right because it is uh, it they are the node of the same children but for DFS what it will go it will take the first children and it will explode in between them right so it has obviously taken more path than uh, BFS because finally it is going depth of the children while in the sec in BFS it has nothing to do there so it for this scenario what will happen the path written by BFS will no longer be you know uh, uh, longer than written by the DFS that is the reason I just give you the scenario for other scenario also it holds now coming to the next question Suppose we are planning a uh, playing a game where there is a one goal state and each step has cost in range of 1 to 100. Now we used to find out the optimal path starting from initial state which of the search algorithm are guaranteed to be optimal. So that we have to say whether it's a BA, BFS, whether it's a UCS, uh, sorry, UCS, iterative deepening search and bidirectional uniform search, what would be there? So here cost is involved but in other algorithm cost is not uniform other than un uh, uniform cost so if it's just selected it will be this both uniform cost search and uniform cost uh, bidirectional uniform cost search so this is how it works now coming to the next question what are the following graphs search with the full duplicate separation d is the it is just asking the definition of bfs and dfs that you can easily say is the so the time complexity for what will be the bfs and space complexity for dfs it would be o b keep r m and uh, order of b m respectively now coming to the next question this is you need to do it on paper so a is the initial state here is the source i want to go to l if you do bfs what will be the path just do it so from a to l we want to go we start from a and we'll go to l l is the gold state and we uh, the search algorithm which is given to us is the bfs and uh, one question also always prefer lexicographical smallest what does that mean for for a there are two childs b c d right so which one should i select so it is saying select the lexicograph lexicographically smallest so you should select b because b comes first in c and d in that way you just run the bfs and see what is the you know path is coming i am giving a minute
Yeah, so let's run the BFS. I think people have got the solution now match with me, whatever I'm saying. So we are doing BFS here. So what will happen? We have, we are at the A, we have three options, B, C, D, right? So let's also write it somewhere. What to do with the uh, solution for that? So I could have, um, so just match huh, what I'm saying. So we are the A, we have B, C, D, and as I said, we are uh, doing the lexographically smallest first. So we'll do expand B first. So we expanded B, then C, and then D, right? So we have A, B, C, D. Now for B, you'll expand E and F. For C, you'll expand G, and for D, you'll expand H. The second layer has also done. Now we'll go to the third level, which will be I. For E, you'll do I. For F, you'll do J, because I already has been explored. For G you will do K and for H you will do nothing because K already has flowed. So the order is A, B, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And for, uh, you again go to I and you are doing exploration of L. So finally it will be like that. The order will be simply the order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, right? So this is how the BFS works. So this must be now clear to you. In a graph where the goal is neither a root nor at the depth one, iterative beeping search will definitely expand how many nodes, more, less, or equal number, or cannot say compared to BFS. So this is the searching algorithm is given. So it's always going to explore more because it, the situation is given, it is neither the root nor at the depth one. So the difference between what these are two algorithm lies here, if you see. Iterative deepening search. Iterative deepening, so we do one and then we double it two and then four like that if you have compared to bfs it is happening breathwise right so this is why it a solution is here answer would be more now next question in bfs how many times a node is visited in bfs algorithm if you have to re run how many times a single node will be visited with this once twice and equivalent to the number of in degree of the node and thrice the way tricky one just think for a second and then say Yeah, so if a node will have different in degree, right, from A I'll go to B, C, D, right, so this number of times, because from there also I'll come there, right, so this is how it is, it answer would be equivalent to number of in degree node. Next question, this is the scenario and it is saying apply the BFS, similar to question which we have done, start is the G, what will happen? G would be start, then what will be the BFS? If you have to do the lexical graphy again, then you A, uh, what you will do? For G, you will expand A, I, or J, right? Because A first, then I, and then J, because lexicographical. So it will be G, A, then I, G, A, sorry, H is also there, or node. So, so it will be G, A, H, I, J. And if you expand, you will get the, to the answer, which will be option 3, right? Now coming to the next question, this is interesting. This is the goal state and the source state, right? The eight budget problem. What is the maximum number of state also called the branching factor you can have? So how many, uh, you know, uh, you will have maximum sub nodes? So because 
here the blank can move left right up and down but but not for this scenario in general scenario how many it can have four so four would be the answer next question what is the state space size this is the state and how many states can it have each have you know nine possible option one to eight and then blank then finally if you'll do nine for one then for other it will be eight for other seven and multiply them it will be nine factorial finally because nine to eight into seven two is equivalent to nine factorial the next question is consider the running vfs algorithm start with s oh, okay so saying you start with the s from source to goal from this is the source and you have to go go to the goal in how many steps you'll go if you apply the bfs so we apply it, let's say bfs and see how much it is going this is the source if you'll expand it for blank it will either go to up or you know right that we have done for this one it can go to where this one can go to the right or it can go to uh, up so that's why the two options for this one again the two options if you see this is the where we want to go one two three four five six seven and eight this is the goal state so how many nodes you have visited for including the source one two three four five and six six node we visit then we reach to the goal so this was the question how many nodes the so six nodes should be there okay so this is how we have done here so problem and next class will be reading about you know the uh, where you we have some information and do